Welcome to Generations, a show which helps people 50 and better lead happy, healthy, and productive lives. Here's your moderator, Nadia Giordana. Hello and welcome to Generations. I'm Nadia Giordana. We have a fun show lined up for you today and an interesting guest. But first, let me introduce my co-hosts, Gloria Van Demeltrap. Thank you, Nadia. I'm delighted to be here. I think this is going to be a fun day. It's always fun to have you here. Oh, thank you. And also, Ellie Freed. Hi, Ellie. Hi, I'm glad to be here too with my old friend, Eileen, who has been on the show before. And Midge Bubani. Thank you for asking me to fill in for Karen today. I'm delighted to be here. We miss Karen, but it's great to have you here. Thanks. And we have a great guest. Eileen Moore and Eileen you are before I was involved with this show you were on the panel here host of the show I think if I'm hearing correctly you were you were worked on this show is I that wasn't right the host but I was on the panel oh you did uh -huh. both yeah uh -huh. and that was also for it's a woman's world wasn't yes, it yes, yes yes well welcome Eileen it's great to have you here thank you it was lots and lots of fun to work with Mike on the two previous shows, uh, uh, It's a Women's World and, and Generations when it first started. Um, so I'm happy to be here. I'm sure it's just as much fun now for you as it was when we started the show. So. It is fun. And why don't you maybe share a couple of memories and what it was like uh, working with the show? Well, OK. Um, when we started up um, It's a Women's World, we, first of all, we had a long discussion about what the name of the show should be and lots of arguments. <laughs> so it was at the very beginning Well, the of very the... beginning of It's a Woman's World, okay. yes. And um, great women to work with, and we had lots and lots of fun and came up with lots of ideas, a lot of creative women. And of course, Mike was there to guide us and teach us how to do all of this. And um, it was really an exciting thing. Uh, none of us had done anything like this before. And um, we learned a lot, and we had a lot of fun, and we became very good friends. And it was always fun to, you know, figure out what kind of topics we wanted to talk mm -hmm. about. And we, it was always about women, because uh, that was the name of our show, It's a Women's mm -hmm. World. And, and we did old things, uh, you know, from olden times and, and modern things, and we tried to get some a little bit of controversial things in there, but always had a good time. And and even people on the panel didn't always agree. We had a, mm -hmm. a variety of ages. I was always the old lady, <laughs> <laughs> the older oldest one on the panel. But um, just really, really fun. And uh, you know, I, Mike just gave us a chance to just learn something new, which is always so exciting and so much fun. So. I'm just so grateful for that time. I think it was on for 10 years. I think oh. it was. Oh, seems like that. And uh, just, you know, hated to leave, but I had a lot of other things going on. And that was just about the time that I retired and I left my home. And a lot of other things happened in my life. So um, I'm so glad it still goes on. What was it that got you started on the program? Were you still working in a in a job or a career at the time, and and if so, how did you work that in amongst what you were? Doing I was on the show? still on uh, city committees, mm -hmm. maybe th I think uh, three of them. I was on the mayor's committee on aging, and I was on several other things. I was very involved in in um, public. Uh, um, activities and mm -hmm. uh, community affairs. And I got to know Mike. Um, gee, how did I get to know Mike? <laughs> you know, Mike's the person you get to know <laughs> if you're involved <laughs> in things, you know? And we were both involved in a lot of things. And I was working for the St. Paul Public Library. It was my last job before I retired. I worked there for a long time. But I had always been involved in city affairs. and. Um, I was the president of the League of Women Voters, and that kind of gets you really involved in the city and city government. And uh, so um, I got to know Mike, and, and I knew Mike when he started these uh, 
this new venture of, of starting a, he had, you know, these ideas of start, mm -hmm. let's start a show. Let's, you know, like, do you remember the old shows, Judy Garland and, and people would say, they'd get a barn and say, let's start a show. And then, <laughs> well, that's, that was the days. Mike was, Mike was the, the one that said, let's start a show and started a show. And, and uh, it was just really fun and the memories are all good. That's good to hear. Good to hear. How when you when you left your um, job with the library, then and you retired from there. Yes, I retired from the St. Paul Public Library from the city of St. Paul. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you moved somewhere. You I moved did. to a. Um, I did. I uh, my husband died, is the big mm -hmm. catalyst in this That's whole story. Right. Yes. He um, had a wonderful marriage and a wonderful husband, and he died. Um, 10 years ago. And um, we had bought a small, we lived in Highland Park, and we bought a small retirement house some years before that, when our children had left the nest. Mm -hmm. And um, we lived there, and we were gardeners, and we, we loved to garden, and we had gardened, and I had a labyrinth in my backyard, and I had, you know, made my backyard into the kind of garden I wanted with paths and, mm -hmm. Uh, interesting things and a labyrinth that I, that I had on the internet as an open labyrinth that people could come and walk and I had oh. some the yard was very in, very important to me and my husband helped me in the garden I was a gardener but he you know we did this together and um, after he died my children started saying to me you know mom you know, this is a lot. Why don't you start thinking? You know, <laughs> and we were in a small home, we, a retirement home, which I thought I'd be in for the rest of my life. We had started our married life in a 20-room house with a oh five my. and a half acre yard. Oh my! A, a lot, right in Highland Park, which is very, <laughs> very unusual to find a house like that in right in the city, Highland mm -hmm. Park. But um, as the children grew up, you know, and we were getting older, we moved to this small house, which we thought would be our retirement home. Mm -hmm. And then when you're alone, things change, you know. You, right. you, you don't need change. all that room either. You don't need all that room, and, mm -hmm. and you're living alone, and that's the beginning mm -hmm. of this, when you're alone. That's the beginning of your life changing. Mm -hmm. And uh, my children started saying, you know, um, Mom, think about, you know, do you want to mow the lawn and do you want to be hauling sprinklers around mm -hmm. the, the yard and all the gardening that I did took a lot of mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. work. That's, so that's the beginning. That's one of the hardest things to do, to convince someone when we don't want to leave our home that's so comfortable, we're, we're accustomed to everything and we enjoy it so much, we don't realize that it's too much for us. How do we convince people to do that? I think uh, my husband and I did it, and, and actually my husband had died and I remarried, and then I moved into his bigger house, but we eventually sold that and got a, a small townhouse, and it's the best thing we ever did. It's mm -hmm. just wonderful. And I see my friends aging too, and I think, how can I convince them, or how can their families you convince can't, them? You can't. You can't. This is something that has to be reached in you. You know, mm -hmm. my children talked to me, and I started thinking about it, but you can't convince anybody. Until they you're have, ready. They have to be ready. Mm -hmm. You just have to say, I don't need this anymore, you know. And um, I, it's hard. <laughs> it's nice if you can make the decision together, I think, you and, yes. and your husband. Yes. It's hard to leave. <laughs> it's hard to leave the place when you and your husband live together. I think mm -hmm. it really is, and I always say, gee, I wish my husband had seen this. I wish he knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. that's sentimental, you know. But um, you have to be ready. You just have to be ready. I don't think you can convince your friends. Yeah. They'll, well, they'll, they'll reach a point where they're ready. Point. Yeah, Good point. and part, that's part of what we were going to discuss today is major changes mm -hmm. as as we get older. And, and I know uh, my husband and I are in a house. It's not as big as the one you described, but it's bigger than we need. We both love it. But, uh, and I think I got to the point where I was ready to let go sooner. So now within the next couple of years, I'm ready to think, let's sell this mm -hmm. place. And my husband's not quite at that point, mm -hmm. but uh, in the last six months, he's gotten to where, no, 
that's not even on the horizon to, well, yeah, maybe it is, mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is too much yard work. Mm -hmm. So we're coming close to being on the same page with that mm -hmm. and simplifying life. But I, mm -hmm. I have imaginings of a much simpler life than, mm -hmm. than all that yard work, as much mm -hmm. as I like it. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the difficulty is when you have a spouse and mm -hmm. they're in a different place than you yes. are with that That's decision. a big deal. And it, you feel like you're constantly mm -hmm. trying to talk about it mm -hmm. and they're maybe not really ready at all. And you want to so be subtle about right. it. Yeah. You know, I didn't understand that at all. So yeah. we're hearing different things here. Yeah. I just thought how sad it was for me to make that decision alone. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish it had been there. Yeah. But, I, but it would be sad, yes. Sure, but there's different Mm -hmm. Different yeah. situations, different here. issues. I'm, seeing, I'm hearing your side of it mm -hmm. now. Sure, yeah, that's we have a small for people to get together. We have a small little bungalow mm -hmm. that we bought to retire in. It's not the big house that we raised our kids in, but um, it, it's it's enough for us to take care of. We have someone cut the grass and shovel the snow, but I still garden. Here's um, a question I have for you, Ellie, then, because you're you're in the small bungalow, and, and maybe even you, Eileen, but because this is the fear I have is, will I have regrets? Will I regret that? Will I regret it? I, I know I won't regret it enough to make the change back once mm -hmm. I do, but do you miss the other place? And do you? Well, we haven't left the bungalow yet. We're still I, there. Well, the bungalow, the yeah. house you had prior to that. No, we, we were there. We've been in this house for 20, 29 okay. years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm afraid of, uh, you know, finding a townhouse in the city of St. Paul that's one level is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And um, if uh, the thing that I'm afraid of is moving to a suburb where our kids are mm -hmm. and losing all the activities that we're part of. Yeah. And... Um, that's all our friends that we're close to. And that, that's a big concern, is, is that when you yes. do move, and I know you address that, is that you've got doctors, mm -hmm. you've got your friends, you've got all your services, the your church. favorite, mm -hmm. your church, your favorite yeah. hair salon and all this. So how do you make do with that, you know, making that decision? Mm -hmm. I tough. was so lucky. I was so lucky when my children were saying, Mom, you know, you have to start thinking about this now. And I would, all of the things you just said mm -hmm. were right in my mind and in my heart. You know, how do I leave all of this? Mm -hmm. And one day, I picked, we lived in Highland. And one day I picked up the Highland Villager, the newspaper for Highland. And there on the front page was the architect's drawing of the Carandolet Village, which was to be built. And it was, uh, they called it a village and it was to be built, and it was to have uh, independent uh, living apartments, and it was uh, also to have uh, uh, a care center for people that were sick mm -hmm. that would be taken care of and then go back mm -hmm. to their apartments. It was to have everything, everything. you needed until, until you died, once you mm -hmm. moved there, you know, mm -hmm. or if you wanted to stay. And I looked at that, and I said, well, that's it. That's it. Because I was going through the very mm -hmm. things that you just, mm -hmm. uh, you've all just talked about. You know, well, I miss this little bit. And it was going to be <coughs> six blocks from the house that, we, that I, I was oh, living okay. in. Okay, so oh, you had wow. the same neighborhood. The <laughs> same neighbors, the same places I shopped, the same, you know, I didn't have to change anything. And mm -hmm. I know it. I'm a St. Paul person. I, my sisters were all moving to the suburbs. Everybody was moving to the suburbs, and I thought, not me, not me. I'm <laughs> St. Paul. And Ellie and I were the only two of our classmates. Yeah. We have a, a big group of high school friends that we still get together, and they were moving to the suburbs, and Ellie and I were saying, no, we're staying in the city. <laughs> we always live close to each other. So you two went to high school together? Oh, we went to grade, grade school, school together. Oh. Oh. From first oh, nice. grade. From first grade. And, um, and we've never had a fight. We're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so all of those things were taken care of for me. I looked at it. I saw the drawing. I dialed the telephone, and I said, I want to get on the waiting list. And the, the marketing director said to me, she laughed. She laughed at me. And she said, there's no waiting list. There's no building. There's nothing. This is oh. an architect's drawing. <laughs> and I said, well, when will there be a waiting list? And she said, Maybe in a year. Oh. <laughs> and I said, I'll wait. So anyway, 
um, she said, I said, you know, can I get, can you, can I get on your post waiting list? Mm -hmm. She said, no, but keep calling. Oh. So I kept calling and I was one of the first people in. And so I was able to pick the apartment I wanted and to, you know, and um, it's get very in. nice. Mm -hmm. um, my maiden name was Flanagan and I got into the, the hall that was, is now called Irish Alley. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Everybody that moved in there happened to be Irish. And it's just, you know, if I could, you know, Ellie and I belong to a group of friends from school I mentioned. And one time we sat around, this was maybe, what, Ellie, 20 years ago? I don't know. But we sat around and talked about how we valued this friendship from high school. And we talked mm -hmm. about maybe we'll all be widows, because they say, Usually uh, the women, the, the men die first. We talked about what would our dream be? Our dream would be, let's all buy it when our husbands die. Let's all find a place where we can have little, little, <laughs> little houses all in a row. And we'll have a, a, a main dining room that we can get together and eat with every night. And we'll have a nice big place that we might have a library, we might have a rec room where we can play games and stuff and a nice big place where we can talk, just get Fun together and talk. Idea. But we can have our own bedrooms. That's what I'm in. <laughs> That's what you've got. <laughs> my dream came true for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's wonderful. So in, in, But it takes a lot of when you're ready, you know when you're just, ready. Yeah. Yeah. In today's world, um, we are in the United States and, and all around our baby boomer generation mm -hmm. is aging and we are yeah. ha we are mm. fortunate because <clears throat> we're in that that right. time period we have many many yes. uh, facilities like the one you're describing yes. and like the one where you live yes. are being built now yes and um, it's really great because we have wonderful wonderful choice of yes. those kinds you're of places and as right. you were talking 20 years ago we didn't have those I know we th this there we are making of this up now. out of our heads you know <laughs> and, it, and being silly and laughing about it you know mm -hmm. but you're right you're right yeah. Yeah. we're at the exactly right time and people are listening and they're knowing you know uh, city developers and and uh, people that study needs of aging and everything and uh, and you know it's mostly women that end up in these places y statistically you know. that's true statistically yeah. mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. it is yeah. what about transportation you know you think about as we age uh, the idea of give, giving up driving I was thinking of that today myself I'm not anywhere close to giving up driving I love it too much and I love my independence but I notice that I get more stressed in heavy traffic I always was and that that's what I remind myself as Nadia you were always stressed mm -hmm. in heavy traffic remember that you came from a farm but I think about that what, what point is, is is this due to age or the fact that I've always been stressed in traffic and at what point do uh, once you take that a few years farther down the road, uh, make the decision to give up driving. My father let go of his keys willingly, and we were all so grateful because yeah. mm -hmm. he was a son of a gun as far as never, no one else in the family ever being able to tell him what to do, but <laughs> he had that foresight yes. to give up his keys yeah. at one point, at just the right point. But I think about that, you know, what will I do when the time comes? Yeah. I'm not stressed driving, but I'm stressed when my husband is driving. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other side of that That's coin. That's true. Too. In, in, you know, traffic rush hour and sure. stuff, or any time. <laughs> well, I think drivers, as we age, we do change, and yeah. our abilities change. Mm -hmm. Our reflexes. Like, um, yeah. Seeing poorly or less well mm -hmm. at night yes. Yes. is mm -hmm. a physical, mm -hmm. you know, fact. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's so. such a good. It, that is such a, a good topic, and I, I'm thinking of it. I've dealt with it personally when my husband, my husband who passed away, was ill, and he was on a ton of medication, and he was driving. And I tried to gently bring the subject up that mm -hmm. that you shouldn't really be driving anymore. You are not as as on top of it, as clear, as able, your your faculties are failing and mm -hmm. you are a danger and this is not, not good. Well, all I do is go to Cub and I'm thinking the grocery store parking lot is the worst place mm -hmm. in the world to drive. Yeah, yeah. And 
Um, so I talked about it with my friends too. How can I get him to get up, get up driving? But if that's another thing, Eileen, as you were saying, we have to do it ourselves. We have to get there ourselves. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, he took our conversation to heart, and he did. Wow. He did give up the keys, and it he realized thinking, he realized that he had to stop driving. Wow. He was too much of a danger to others yeah. and to himself. Well, I mm -hmm. think both you and you are lucky with the experiences you had with your husband and your father. Yeah, because yeah, it can be the opposite. It's, sometimes oh, mm -hmm. it's a real struggle. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Now yes. I have quit driving, so I can tell you from experience, I. Um, I was going to a, I was very, still very involved in a lot of um, boards and commissions and, and things that I could do once a month or whatever, and very involved and active. And I was driving to a meeting, and uh, I went to this meeting with a friend, and a lot of the meetings were on the east side of St. Paul. And um, one morning uh, I was driving, we took turns driving, and one morning I was driving, and uh, she called me the, before I left to say that her husband was very ill and she was going to take him to the hospital. So I was alone in my car, and I got maybe a mile from my house, and I passed out in my car. Oh my. Oh my. I had passed out once before in my living room, and the doctor kind of, you know, checked me in, didn't know what was wrong, and kind of let it go. She said, well, if it was only once, you know, maybe, uh, mm -hmm. maybe this, maybe that. And that was six months or eight months before this. I'm driving, and I was feeling fine ever since. I was driving my car, and all of a sudden, I heard somebody on the, knocking on the door uh, mm -hmm. window, and he said he had been out there for 10 minutes trying to raise me. I had hit a, 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 a city truck <laughs> that was parked in the street, and I had gone to the right and hit that. So you didn't remember passing out or No, anything? I didn't oh, know. I did not goodness. know. I did not know anything. Did you quit driving after that? I did. Yeah. Okay, so he called the... Um, uh, well, whoever he called it, and the uh, uh, police or whoever, <laughs> I don't know what happened because I wasn't out, but anyway, people came and opened my car, woke me up, and uh, took me to the hospital. The car was totaled. Oh, the whole okay. front of the car was bashed. They could not understand why my legs were okay, but the, the seat where my friend would have been sitting was not there anymore. Oh, it was just totally okay. because oh, it was on the right that I hit yeah. the most. Oh. So she would have been killed. And, the, and this is what the ambulance people said to me on the way to the hospital, I, um, that my friend, it, it, had she been there, she would have been killed. Mm -hmm. uh, I passed out two more times on the way to the hospital. And um, they did all kinds of tests on me and found some lesions in my head. And that's another whole story. But I said, well, who do I give my driver's license to? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I've never, of course, I would never drive, drive again. Um, so I want to tell you, giving up your house is hard, but it's something you can live with, and there are lots of wonderful places to live. But giving up your car is giving up your I'll independence. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. It's terrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> what so next I, steps did you do as far as transportation? Was it public transportation? I'm still working on it. Still, <laughs> you know, working. if you can solve it, I should talk to Mike. Mike gets anywhere he wants to get yeah. on <laughs> public transportation. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's just there really are many, hard. Many um, uh, businesses now starting with. Um, taking people around that you can call and get a ride. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know my, uh, my, I have two sons living in town, but they have small children and they're busy, busy families and everything. And for any emergency, I can get them. I've tried... Uh, Metro Mobility? Yes, I've tried Metro Mobility twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First time, I waited an hour and a half for them to pick me up and missed my doctor appointment. They wouldn't take me in because it was so late. The second time, they came and got me on time but forgot to pick me up. So I've oh never my. tried them again. Yeah. Um, now I have friends that say, oh, you just get used to that and you make your appointments. Uh, well, I, yes. <laughs> I can't get used to that. I can't get used to that. 
Uh, there are some other places, but you have to call so far and ahead. I mean, there's no, no, you know, you can call an ambulance if you're sick and you have to mm -hmm. go, but I haven't solved that problem. And I've been there here, mm -hmm. living about there cabs. five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cabs. cab is the, a cab is the way. Then you, if, you, if you're very blessed and you have a friend like Ellie who lives near you, she, mm -hmm. the things that we do together, she is wonderful and picks me up. But there are all kinds of millions of things that you have to do mm -hmm. that she doesn't do. So yeah. it's it's very difficult. So part of that would be also then choosing where you live so that you're at least close to some of the most well, important I'm, things. When I moved in, I'm I'm a block and a half from Randolph. So I could take the bus and I bussed all over. Mm -hmm. I you know, good bus rider. Bus good bus rider and I love buses, but I can take my uh, get on the bus on Randolph and go down down to Snelling and go down to University on the bus and get on the Green Line. So I've got a lot of things. But now, five years later, it's not as easy for me to mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do all that. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, <laughs> I was a real goer five years ago, mm -hmm. but I have some additional uh, health problems, so I, that's not as easy. Mm -hmm. So I'm still working on this. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, my children live in Minneapolis, and there was one incident where my son uh, picked me up, took me over there, but then because of something that ha occurred, called Uber to take me home. I've heard of Uber. Well, yeah, Uber everybody has. Yeah. The man that came for Uber was awful. And the steps to get into his car, I said, how can that be licensed? And, my, and then my children explained to me what Uber was, just mm. people that own cars. Yeah, they're private this, people, as I understand. The steps was as high. And if my son wasn't holding onto my arm, I would have fallen mm -hmm. down in the street. So <laughs> I haven't solved that problem yet. <laughs> so, so it takes a lot of research to mm -hmm. do, to, mm -hmm. to look at it. The, the, you bring up such a good point about look, we have to study the things that are available That's right. for yeah. our conditions That's at right. the time. That's and right. they change all the time. They change. Yeah. That's they the change thing. all they the change. time. So we, yeah. we, our hearing goes, yeah. our sight goes, our, yeah. sometimes we have That's health right. issues. That's right. That's right. I thought living by, you know, right by a bus was going to solve it for the rest of my life. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And now I'm going to have to, you know, do some yeah. more work. Mm -hmm. And like you said, taxi cabs is probably the. You know, when you have mm -hmm. to get to the doctor or something, that's probably the best. Nothing mm -hmm. is permanent except change, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's Nothing inevitable. Nothing is permanent that's, except change. But that's, that's right. You know, that's that's only one thing. That's right. There's yeah. so many wonderful mm -hmm. things that, you know. Yeah. There's always got to be something that you're working on. There's <laughs> always right. a lot of things. Well, we're running out of time, but oh. Eileen, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was fun to reminisce <laughs> about things that uh, happened and developed with with this program and the, and the other one, It's a Woman's World, before I came on the show. I've only been here five years. So thank you for being so here. Fast. And Midge and Ellie and Gloria, thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for watching the show. We'll see you next time. Back, I'm free women's lib. And uh, when I was in high school, I was one of the um, top honor students in the National Honor Society. And my career uh, guidance consisted of being called into the counselor's office and urged to go to college, which certainly was not a given for women in those days, and told to look at three career paths, uh, nurse, um, teacher or librarian. And now there's nothing wrong with those professions. I, my happiest job in my life has been working for the St. Paul Public Library as a librarian. But those were the three things. I mean, they didn't say a doctor or a scientist. They did not say, you know, you could be a woman astronaut. <laughs> no, we had three things. So mm -hmm. we were starting way back then.